Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm continuing on painting. Finished the other one. I cleared off my palette here. Got it all ready again. Just use a damp paper towel and take it right off. And uh, that's a nice thing. You can do that all really easy if it's within, say, an hour. You know, it works really well. Just cleans it all off. Okay, here we go. Same type of thing. Same colors out here again. Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, uh, the Napsol red light, pine green, thalo blue. Red violet, quinacridone violet, black and white. I haven't even touched the black there for a while. Let's do a little pre-glazing onto this board and let's get painting, all right? So uh, the color here again is the white, a touch of black and some yellow. And I'm gonna glaze it this time. Take out some water here. We'll make a like a violet into the back. I like this leaning slightly to the, um, to the yellowish side. But uh, that works really well if you're going to glaze like violets and stuff into that. And violets, blue violets, and violets work really pretty. And I do like movements and stuff in the background. You do not have to have them. You can put any kind of colors or anything you want here. You know, but these types of, of looks, the reason why I do it is these types almost touch extended. Or I don't want that. I want this to dry. Um, these types of looks... Uh, sell really well for me and I'm a production painter I'm a selling artist I sell everything I do and um, which allows me to keep doing what I do you know but uh, uh, I sell everything I do and these looks just sell really well okay so I put a little bit of that vibe and that's pretty got little flakes of some of the blue you know you could you could break this all up you know like maybe add a touch more of a, a blue or something like that down to this area that you know most of that will cover up with what we're going to paint but any kinds of little marks and stuff like that always look really nice when we go to paint. Let's paint um, a white flower, maybe some yellows, pull out some of the background here, and maybe into some violets and stuff into the background, or background flowers. All right, so we'll take uh, some of the blue and violet that we have here, like a little green that gives you a nice, um, you look at this and you say, okay, where's that got to go to go to gray? You could use any kinds of reds into that and that will be a nice warm gray see how that's put it on a gray and warming that gray so it's going more gray and i think that's probably about enough it's a nice and i'll play back and forth with it lighten this up here to buy a value eight or so just about what that background is since we did the last rose going that way let's go back this way again and put on some uh some area there for the rose. I know it's very difficult to see that. We could go a touch lighter here and just work that around a bit, push that color in. That just takes out a little bit of the violet of the background, but we're going to turn and add some of that to our into our rose uh, here. So let's just take some of our quinacridone. Let's start with that one first and push that into the center here and then walk out smaller don't go room all the way do smaller little strokes breaking it up letting it get softer lift the pressure on your brush okay going out come up about a third or so like we've been doing let's drop in that nice nice dark cool here maybe a bit of that blue into that as well right like that i'd like just a little bit of that you know i don't want to paint a blue rose Something about, I know they're, they're blue and blue-violet roses, but something about painting those, I just don't like to do that. Let's uh, go a little bit darker. Just touch into a little more quinacridone, tiny bit, tiny, on the corner brush here, some red-violet. Let's deepen the throat of the rose. That keeps the contrast right here. Don't go out too far. Let's keep the contrast way deep down into the throat of the rose there. That pulls the viewer's eye way down there. We can put a bit of that into our um, shadow here, our bull shadow. That'll be pretty. Here, here we go. Let's uh, pinch wipe that color out of our brush. We'll pick up a warm color. Put a little a nice yellow oxide, put a little bit of white into that. Let's just put a little bit of warmth. Just touch it around some of these areas here. Push that around. So we have a warm side and a cool side to our rose here, okay? Now, we'll paint a lot of this rose using what we call the petal edging technique. That's where we'll put some of our base color and stuff into our rose here. 
but we'll pick up some color. Let me just grab some of this white, okay? And I'm gonna keep the white mostly on one edge, heavy, heavy on one edge. That allows me to push the brush over onto the edge and draw that edge of that petal a little bit easier. Then I'll pinch wipe the color and we'll pull down. But it puts more texture up onto one edge of the rose here. So we'll pick up that edge here. Let's draw, push our finger there. I love how these colors work together. They just work so well together in building a rose. Let's actually build this front a little bit more. A little bit more white, push that in and leave that leave that model, that movement. Only do it a couple of times. Don't don't push too many times. Wipe my finger here for a minute. Just follow that bowl a couple of times. See that nice movement you get there? Leave leave all that movement. That's what makes your rose pretty. Let's pick up some more light. Let's come out to the reaching petal, pull in here, pick up some more, pull in and stop before you get to that bowl so you can incorporate and push in and out. And that's what makes those petals so pretty, like that, okay? And don't overwork them, just, that's why we, that's why we try to do a timed exercise like this, so we learn how to paint faster, so we don't overwork things. Here's a nice back petal, push that around, leave just a little, tip of it. There's all other kinds of roses we'll paint in the second half of the challenge that have all kinds of different other shapes and everything, but I want to keep you going on these shapes for right now. Let's put some of that cool color into this here. We'll come out here onto this side, push that in here. Okay, let's try not to grow the rose, Dave. Don't grow it too big here. And uh, just push that around and sometimes I'll leave little marks like that outside and you know I'll use negative painting of leaves and stuff to actually shape the rows softer little side here push that right up into some movement a little bit of movement here just around and I got a bit of dark back up there that's a little bit uh, contrasty there, so I'll just soften that out with a little light here. Pick up just a bit more. Let's put in a shape or two of some back edge petals here. And um, I think that'll work. Take just a bit of water. I meant to put a few drops of that, more of that out. I like to have a few drops on the palette here. and Just touch into them. Let's get a a little bit more of a shape. And if you put a, just a touch, my finger was a little bit wet when I touched that. You can see how that color just slides really nice. So just a little bit of moisture slides that color really nice. Okay, let's pick up some more white. You could restate if you wanted to have more yellows into this rose to show up more warmth. You could restate a little bit of your warmth into here. That just looks real pretty to get that nice yellow warmth in there and uh, so sometimes I don't always pull in so sometimes I'll go like this and strike a petal right across like that that puts on a heavy look at it. sometimes I'll stroke it in sometimes I'll just do it right here with my finger pushing that in and out and leave that strong mark I don't always make petals I paint for movement so I'll leave that strong mark there this time like that and I like that. Then maybe here, I'll pull some out with some texture. We'll let this go a little cooler right down here. So I pick up a little coolness, push that around to the to the shape of the bowl. I like those textured strokes. Let's pick out uh, a little more texture here, right in there. A little bit of coolness with it as I come around to this side of the rose. Push that around here. All kinds of ways. It's, it's really a challenge to build the whites, you know, because white is one of your most opaque colors as artists use. And uh, so this just really teaches you a lot. Now, 
I'm going to put in another petal right here. So what I'm going to, I'm not going to use white. I'm going to go into the white and then I'm going to pick up some of my violets here and stuff so it's a little softer color, just a little softer and just pull down just a bit. See, you can push other petals in there and that is a good thing for you to practice. That's so I don't always put them in right away and I'll, I'll put them in other, at other times asking myself to practice that and that's a good thing to practice right there. Now this, these two joined up right here to a tangent line. It just goes all the way there. That's not so great. That's easy to fix. We just take a petal or so larger, longer, push that around and we don't want them create too many lines like that. Now I'm going to Take a little bit of that violet and a little water here and some of that original gray and reset that, that bull shadow right in there a bit more. Right in there. And a little white on the edge of my finger. Sometimes you got to remember to clean your finger there. Oh boy, that happens. So, but it's easy to fix. So then I'll pick up more white and uh, we'll strike on, let's see, let's... Uh, just kind of chisel the petal right in here, right like that. You chisel the brush. Now, that's kind of small for me to get my finger in there, so I'll do it with my brush this time. I'll put some of the, just put a little bit of the color on the brush. This is where the fusion brush just shines. You can just soften that movement really nice. And let's go ahead and pull the light movement back down one more time so it sits, those two are coming together there. We'll bring these together out like that. And like I showed you before in other roses, you can always tap into a little shadow and pull from the base out and lift off. Touch it right here by the base or by the bowl and lift off. And that puts a beautiful shadow right up deep there. Now if you get a little heavy like I did there, then you just take a little bit of light, pull it back out. Don't uh, do it too many times though, because you know, you can destroy the look of your rose. Let's put a soft, let's put a soft little set of petals right over here. I think just a little bit of movement here onto this side. And um, I'll rinse my brush real quick. I'll show you, I'll do this with just, this is another thing I do. I do it with just water into my brush here and just pull it right after that. And that just softens that out. And then you can restate some of your bowl shadow right in there. Real nice, just, and it looks just like you know what you're doing. Just like that, see, it makes a nice, pretty, soft little edge of the rose there. Now, I could put, you know, we can look back to some of the French Victorian painters and Pettit, which I like, what we call Pettit marks. Put a few little marks here like this for, extra little petals or something like that. Eugene Pettit, though, was a great, great uh, uh, painter of casual, casual flowers. Let's take a bit of our, our two violets, just a touch of them, maybe a, soften it with just a bit of our blue, and restate some of that center here. Pull that down. And around. Sometimes I'll use this just to open up the rose. I like everything that's going on in a rose, but I think this I could create a little better shadow side. So I'll open it up like that and then set the, the other lights down a little lower. So this kind of leans the rose, opens it up a bit. All kinds of ways. See, they're all kind of fun things to play with there. Just like that. That looks pretty good for the, for the rose there. We could have just one more little strike of heavy texture right up here into the front of the rose to uh, push some of those petals like that. That's kind of pretty. And then, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of an edge like this. So you can put just an edge and touch it just lightly and blur that edge. But you got a little edge there to close off that rose. All right, that's enough on that. And let's go back into our greens and burnt sienna, some of my favorite colors. We'll put in a stem here. We'll move this around a bit. Let's, uh, so I like to get that stem in there to start feeling that color. Let's get some of our violets, blues, 
and and uh, quinacridones and stuff in here. Let's start pushing that around. Vary the tone here. Sometimes a little bit more blue here, and then sometimes a little bit more violet, a little lighter, different color. You'll find out when you're painting like this just how powerful that salo blue is into a painting when you start that like that. Okay, so that sets the color. Now see what I like to do is and vary it a bit. This is where I like to, if I'm going to paint. You know, you I use this type of techniques on lilacs and small light blossoms. We're just painting blossoms. I don't want to paint a lilac in here right now, but I love these colors into lilacs. We'll take some of our lights. We'll right here like this, and we'll start some light little blossoms, smaller ones. We'll start touching those around. Let's get a bit lighter. Model the color up here. So sometimes it comes out a little more quinacridone, sometimes a little more thalo, and sometimes a little more white. So let's get a little thalo over here. So a little bit more of a blue-green here. That's, you know, when you paint little colors like this, let's put a couple of little blue-green petals there. That's what gets pretty when you have some um, different colors coming out in your blossoms here. Let's get uh, and paint them quick. Just little quick marks. Push it in and out of their centers and stuff. Quick, quick, quick. Here. Let's push some of these out. Some of these out just. You don't need to be perfect with these. There's, you know, I always found it's like painting with lilacs. You know, when I finally learned how to really paint beautiful lilacs, is get, you really don't paint a whole bunch of smaller little blossoms. You're kind of painting the movement and stuff in them and, and uh, you know, and, and varying the color more than anything else. And that's what, and it all comes together like a little lilac. And I like that. Let's put a little bit of this blue and stuff over here onto these. Just ideas of them. Some of that over here. Just the idea, see? Let's go a little lighter right up here where these two are coming together. So you really, you know, when I paint stuff like this, I'll, I'll pick out one or two and really kind of paint them. And uh, that kind of sets the, you know, the area that I want, the, my center of interest and stuff like that. And the rest of them, I just paint marks of movement here and just let it diminish down. That's all it needs. Now, we'll cover up some of those with our leaves. Let's get our leaves in here. And a good thing to do is take some of those for a good harmony. Just take some of those colors. I add a little water here, thin this out. Right into your same, um, right into your violets and stuff. And that makes a nice harmony. The greens, because the greens here are carrying the violets. So I'll do one or, or actually two or three little strokes here. Let it set for just a second. Come back and touch one side just to take it off a bit. Let's change the tone here, change it, make it a little more green. So you come down through some of this. Oh, that's the dogs getting up here. And we'll take a bit more of this green and uh, a little bit of our violet and stuff here. Burnt sienna, actually, I used. Let's make a, a bit more, a little darker, a little more burnt sienna here, too. Leaf. I'm just going to grab some extender. It's close. And a little different color right down here at the base of these. Here. You know, young, young leaves and stuff like that in roses are... A little bit more um, sienna colors, burnt sienna colors. Let's drop some of that out here. Some movements and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of pretty here. And uh, let's get it a little darker, a little cooler here. A little red, violet, green. Some quinacridone in there. 
Next up, let's use that for some negative painting and some contrast. This will control now the contrast of the painting. And you can see I can pop off the rows if I want. Um, here I'm going to pop off the edge of this, the white rose here, push the little violety colors down. Let's use that to state some of my stems in there. I can use that little water better. The dogs are now playing over there. It's time for their afternoon walk, so they want to go. Let's uh, take a, a bit of this here, just right up there like that. So you can see it controls the contrast here. Now you can shape up, you know, you can make more shapes to your little blossoms and stuff like that out here if you want, you know. Um, I'm just going to kind of leave that, I think. Get some more water out here. And just a few little marks here out. Stems. Getting to get a little green over here. You could use that to negative paint the rose there. If you want a little bit of movement. That's pretty good. Let's drop the centers on. I'm going to do the, I'm just going to, sometimes I load both first, the yellow oxide and the, the, the Hansa. This time I'm going to load the yellow oxide first. Show you a little different way. I work the different color progressions. It gives you just a little bit different look, you know, so. Yeah, then uh, I'll take like a little burnt sienna, maybe a little red violet with it. And we'll push that down on the shadow side. And push that right into the to the um, Hansa. So that's one of the things I do when I'm, uh, you know, playing around with fast little paintings. I try different color progressions. You know, put the shadow down after you start the center. Put the shadow down before you start the center. You know, try different looks, different ways. Here, then um, let's touch into some of the Hansa. Here's our bright little color. Pick it out towards the light side here. Put down a little heavier, and then just lift the pressure coming around the other side, or tap your finger into it here to blur it a little bit. That works nice. Here, tap this out. Here, just like that. And tap a little bit more into this one. Here. And a little bit, maybe just a, a little bit for color right over here. Just like that. Work that through. Now, you can take some, um, you know, we have the, the light colors of our roses and stuff. And you could take make a nice light yellow green here and hit a few little areas on the, the leaves just real quick like that to... Uh, get the light look to some of those leaves. I am a big advocate of changing colors and doing that kind of stuff. Um, maybe use a light little color here to give that little vein line. There's something about the little vein lines that uh, just give a nice little mark of movement to your uh, to your clothes. And this is a soft little painting here. I like that. Let's go back to our violets. Overall, I like the rose. Um, Grabbing a little water there, keeping this kind of loose here. And uh, we'll go back to our violet, light violets here for a second. And uh, make up a nice light color. I can restate onto those uh, petals after I hit the, of the small flowers, after I hit a few of them with some green here. We'll restate and it doesn't have to be the same color. As a matter of fact, it's prettiest if it's not the same color. So I have a lot of violet down on that one. I'll take this over to the blue. Let's go a little lighter. Take this over to a blue here. And I won't repaint the whole petal. I'll just put a little bit of this blue into that as well. And it gives a little different color to it there. See? A little different color, a little different movement there. It's kind of pretty. Let's bring this one up like 
that. That's kind of nice. I like these to come back and work these petals again. And almost, you know, sometimes I, I, I see a different flower, you know, a different shape of a flower. And that's what uh, gets some um, nice variation to your composition. So you don't repeat the same stroke. I, I'll do something slightly different. And uh, that gives a nice... Nice different look uh, to your flower. Overall, that you know, I'd always go back and check the um, the main rows there. You know, if I feel like it's sinking a little bit, that's where I'll come back with some final like white and add some white textured strokes. There's nothing like texture like that of the white. See that power that it gives that, and um, that light power like that picks them up texture up onto the edge here. And just drop that petal edge in. It just gives a lot of power, texture. That edge brings it right out there a little bit more. It's kind of pretty. You can even use a little bit like on the edge of your petal edging technique just to define those edges up a little bit more. But overall, that's kind of pretty. I may want to take a soft, let's even use some of this blue violet here. And just take some of that movement down into that rose a bit more to get rid of the dark, dark, dark center there. Maybe a bit of that blue showing up in here is pretty. See how pretty that is? A nice, cool little color showing up there. Sink it. I like to sink it with a little light push there. So you pick up just a touch of that blue in there. And that's kind of pretty. That's kind of pretty. Okay, under 27 minutes. That's not too bad. Got another one there. Let those light flowers. Now, out here, so here if you if you feel like you, you know you, you lose some of this, just put in some like little movements out like this. Some other ideas about petal, but don't cover up all your negative space. Leave some uh, leave some uh, areas of that of that background there to um, to say uh, you know negative space, so, so it uh, looks pretty good. So. Let's grab our frame we've been using here, drop it in. This could probably go with a little lighter frame, but uh, yeah, that's not that's not going to be too bad there. Put that in. Okay, there you go. Rose number 11, right? Okay, so give it a try. Play with those violets like that. They're a lot of fun. Okay, and I'll see you on rose number 12.